Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisor channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's beautiful. And let's get into the charts and talk about what altcoins are likely to melt the most. And I do see a pretty decent trade set up again, not, not a financial advisor, but uh, we want to take advantage as Bitcoin is cooling off, ranging. Uh, some of the weaker altcoins are going to continue to the downside and a pretty good setup for an M formation on XLM. And what am I seeing right now is uh, the first kind of impulsive wave breaks the green 55 with volume. Call it right here. Uh, one, then a little consolidation. Two, retrace, consolidation. And basically this M formation, right? First target is right here at 11.7489. That's not 0.11.7489. Call it 11 cents. Next target down, yeah, 110733. And again, this is on Coinbase. I do imagine a lot of stop losses are gonna be hanging out right below there. So we'll get a quick wick down there for a bounce. And then what you'd wanna see again for trend continuation all the way down to that uh, Friday low, that's last week's Friday low, which was kind of our base case target for this week. Forgive the uh, squiggly lines here. But uh, just watching price action and you can almost see this uh, with the retailers basically selling here, selling here. And then what happens? They buy back in. They're buying back in as uh, price is retracing and selling again, buying back in. And, um, you know, the next big, you know, red candle could be significant. It would be the fourth kind of wave down, or the third wave down on this move down one two and then three so let's see if we can get kind of a measure move target using our fib here see if that does line up yep lines up with that uh, 97 1d <laughs> not point not nine seven all right that's it for this one uh since we did say uh altcoins we're going to take a look at adam is uh at the bottom of the barrel here and looks like it's gonna fill in this wick and make another lower low on the four hour at the moment that wouldn't be my first choice ave uh yes this is more of the setup we like momentum is going to cross down below 5834 and um very likely it looks like we're gonna fill this candle out uh down to about 5623 probably gonna have a lot of stops hanging out right below this level and then yeah that's it for that one all right let's get into bitcoin the reason everybody's here today i imagine everybody's got their eyes on bitcoin stock market had a bit of a rally yesterday on the nvidia news and a bit of a trap right so this was the weekend trap box they push it to the downside push it to the upside and now they're going to come grab the liquidity one more time levels to the downside 25765 which we're not quite there yet 25368 for shorter term bounces and um, yeah basically we're back in the box so next target down 258 so yeah probably going to wick below there and then uh there's a lot of liquidity all the way down at 25100 i do think we would bounce actually if we get going way down there, guys, they're they're gonna sweep this area, uh, which is this trend line right here, uh, coming in on the weekly time frame. Which I think we probably already hit that trend line on some exchanges. This is on Binance, so not quite yet. But let's take a look at Bitget. Uh, what was the other one? Coinbase is the one I wanted to see. Actually, bear with me as I. So a lot of room to go on this one still. Um, anyways, just wanted to bring that to our attention and get back to my regular chart here. Shorter term time frame. Let's see what we got on the four hour. This volume, this candle is filling out with some volume. Um, four hours gonna close in about 26 seconds. What else happened today? Uh, we had some economic data came out. The jobs numbers came out. Jobless claims came in lower than expected, which was bullish for the dollar. And you can see NASDAQ is pulling back, breaking that trend line on the four hour. And if we lose this region, uh, a bit of a fake out yesterday off the NVIDIA news, buy the rumor, sell the news. And you can actually see 
it's probably a, a direct retracement to the not 0.5. So it didn't quite get to the 618. And a good clean rejection there. Uh, closing back below the green 55 is going to, um, you know, give us that next ladder move down to fill, actually fill that gap probably down at about 14,508. And again, dollar is continuing to the upside with some momentum. And our overall target for expansion on the volatility for the weekly time frame for Disco or Dixie. So what we don't want to see is volatility begin to expand. Right now it's still contracting, so we have a chance. If volatility expands from this level and all these moving averages start to twist up on the weekly, well, that deeper, deeper target of, you know, 140, 147 could be in the cards. So definitely going to keep an eye on Dixie this year and what that would mean for NASDAQ. You know, probably uh, revisiting this candle right here on the weekly time frame at some point for a retest of the breakout. Uh, so that's good to keep in the back of our minds. Also, bond yields continuing to skyrocket. Looks like most uh, NVIDIA is still in the green today after that massive earnings. I think they came out, you know, the estimate was $12 billion. They came out $16 billion, so an extra $4 billion in earnings. Not bad for them. The banking sector, not doing too bad there. And bond yields, 4.99 on the two-year. So might want to adjust some of those checking accounts out there as uh, banks are probably going to take it on the chin. And tomorrow, Jackson Hole meeting with Jerome Powell. It's supposed to have probably a little bit more of a hawkish tone, uh, but not as bad as last year. So that's what I'm hearing on the news is not going to be the old Paul Volcker he was last year, but going to leave it uh, room for, you know, open for rate, more rate hikes at the end of the year. And usually right as they say, we're getting a soft landing and everything is okay. That's when it gets thrown back in everybody's face. So definitely want to be on the lookout for that. Uh, the more bullish they are, the more bearish I'll be. On the other side of the fence, uh, Ethereum on the 15 minute time frame. Kind of broke that box and uh, you can see all these guys got trapped going long these wicks up here and now they're going to throw it back down and the question is are we going to test this trend line at 1526 uh for ethereum i think there is quite a bit of liquidation levels down there so just looking at the heat map here for bitcoin you know massive liquidity down there at 23.5 i don't think we get there today but 25 one in the cards and to be fair, last time we just blasted right through there. So if we get some kind of bad news tomorrow, coupled with Dixie just rallying to the moon, probably not going to be the best case. Um, on the other side of the fence, if NASDAQ can put in a higher low and Dixie gets kicked back, I just want to check my FX book really quick to see if next week you have any news coming out that could be bullish. So Durable Goods came out... Uh, a little bit higher than expected. And then those jobless claims lower than expected. That set the bullish tone for the dollar today. And Michigan inflation expectations and consumer sentiment tomorrow. Consumers are pretty bullish. So let's see what Powell has to say. And uh, going into next week. Going into next week. S&P case Schiller. Jolts numbers. That'll be probably important. job openings, mortgages, going to the end of the month, August 30th, more employment data and GDP. We got PCE and pending home sales. So yeah, more data through the end of the month and the last day of the month, August 30th, we'll have the 31st, we'll have the monthly close and more personal spending, jobless claims and, uh, the month is going to be over before we know it, guys. Absolutely. It's going to fly by before our very eyes. So might want to take a look at our monthly time frame. And they do say September is typically a red month, but has a lot of volume to chew through there. So monthly time frame. Let's see. 
Yeah, it looks like we're just getting a bounce along this trend line. Still massive ascending triangle for Ethereum. And when this thing does break to the upside, it's going to break out big. And I'm still long-term bullish, guys, on Bitcoin and Ethereum, 100%. You know, short-term hiccups in the market, little volatility. Macro trend is still intact. We're still above 25,000. Uh, Ethereum is still above it. Did it take out the weekly higher low? It did. Took out that low right there, but it didn't take out this one. And that is going to be the major pivot right there at about 1500 bucks. On the weekly time frame for Ethereum, going to get some warning signs flashing just by, you know, taking out that wick. So we don't want to see that happen alongside Bitcoin. Bitcoin dominance also uh, still ticking down kind of in this daily downtrend now. Got a gap fill right there. I don't know how valid that would be. And checking in on CMEs. Nice gap here. So professional gap down. Uh, if we cannot get back above 20 7,000 on CMEs on a daily time frame. Pressure is going to remain to the downside, but easy pivot on the market if we can get back above this area. Specifically, more uh, ready to get bullish above 29,000. That'll look good for, um, you know, complete reversal. Uh, so that would be your bull case, bear case again, you know, taking out the wicks here. Notice on CMEs, we did not get the, the nasty wick down as the market was closed during that time. All right, that's it out of me today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored day, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.